Time's up for Abigail AAMT Time's up for Abigail. AAMT stands for an Abigail Mitchell tale. May 27, 2014. Abigail drew back the curtains to her window, she was hesitant to look out of it, drawing a deep breath, she steeled herself and took a peek, the thing was still out there, the monstrosity stood near the trees, under the light of the street lamp. The orange of the light making it look like a sick joke, its skin oozed about its body like grayish oil, smooth and sometimes lumpy, it must have been at least 7 feet tall, the thing's arms reached below the kneecaps, yet it stood straight up. They ended in terrible claws about the length of its forearm, it had no hair, nor any form of clothing, its face had no eyes whatsoever, just two dark empty sockets, large enough to put tennis balls in, the smile was Irish, like in the movies, from ear to ear, although she could make out no teeth. They were probably there, probably sharp and hooked, enough to tear flesh easily. It had appeared out of nowhere a few days ago, just after finals, graduation was a week away, she had felt the terrible presence while walking home with her roommate, it had been dusk, and she could tell they were being followed, Kylie had not felt a thing, nor sensed anything wrong. Kylie was kind of dingy, though, that stereotypical girl, not interested in much outside of her next boyfriend, and just making it out of school, which was odd, since Kylie had a GPA near Abigail's 4, 0, not that GPA alone could determine one's future. There were many things in one's life that determined that, including past experiences, as Abigail Mitchell looked out her window, she wondered what in her past brought about this threat to her future, she closed the curtain, then sat down on her bed, shivering. As she'd done each day since seeing it. Sleep came, but it didn't last, it was as if the terrible monster could sense her closing her eyes, it raked its claw-like nails across the windowsill, calling out to her in that ethereal voice that monsters in the movies so often used, dry like desert winds over hard rocks, Abigail, wake up. You'll not sleep, not now nor ever again Abigail, let me in, I've so much to tell you, the words slithering from its mouth, the scratching had woke Kylie, Abigail. What the hell is that? Who's calling you? She yelled from the other room, I'm not sure, I think it's a bird or something, I will take a look okay? Abigail shouted back, slowly taking off the covers, she cursed under her breath, that god's damn thing okay take a breath, Abby, you can do this, as long as you don't let it in. One quick peek, just one. She crept to the window, and slowly reached for the curtain, she could make out its face through the curtain, but she had to be sure, as she opened it, the thing looked directly at her, opening its black toothed maw, a loud hiss coming from it, she closed the curtain and moved away in a hurry. Then tripped over her bed, the crash brought Kylie in, she could see the face of the beast from behind the curtain, but it vanished when Kylie entered, hey you okay, her roomie asked concern on her face, there, there was, it was the biggest damn bird. I mean damn it was big. Her voice shaky, a raven, maybe a crow or something, damn it was big she lied. Kylie went over and looked out the window, and only saw the minor scratches that were there, she looked up and out of the first floor dorm room, and saw nothing but dark inky night sky, you're right must have been a raven or something. Whatever it was is it's gone now, she said making her way back to her room, now that her bunkmate was seemingly okay, you gonna be okay. Gone my ass, Abigail thought, she could feel it out there, yeah I'm good, just a little shaken, go ahead back to bed, I'm okay. The creature sat above the window smiling as Abigail Mitchell slept a fitful and restless night, this was the most fun it's had in a while. Her fear was like a feast, it soaked it up, the pheromones, her energy, soon her flesh would be the finale to a most sumptuous meal. May 28, 2014. The next day Abigail spent much of it yawning and rubbing her eyes as she did some shopping, she had not felt the thing's presence much of the day, but it was there all night, it was if it fed off her fear and fatigue, much like a leech, that's what it was, a leech she thought to herself. Its visage was fearsome, unlike anything she had seen in a movie, she went to the local library to check out the mythical section, and even the gaming section, she was a gamer and loved to roleplay, many of the monsters in those games came from myth and legend. She spent nearly the whole day checking the internet on her phone and tablet, looking for anything like the creature she saw, it had never made any overt moves to harm her, at least not yet anyway. 
but she could feel it following her everywhere she went. She had to think of something. This could not go on. She had to find out what it was. As a last resort, she went to a local tribal shaman, then to a priest of the Catholic Church. She told the priest what she thought it was, but only mentioned that it was a dream that she had been having. The shaman and priest both told her that she was possibly being pursued by a demon, one that sought to drive her insane and thus forcing her to commit the heinous act of suicide, leeching off her fears. Before forcing her to commit a grave sin, they both offered to bless the room, for small donations of course. She took them up on their offer. May 29, 2014. Abigail was happy to have both the shaman and the priest bless her room, and she herself, the priest asked her if she had accepted God into her life, she'd say anything to keep her sanity, she could feel the leech demon tugging at her mind, even now. The shaman offered similar of the ancestor spirits, again Abigail accepted, her confidence bolstered, she could feel the thing's seething anger, it did not like what she was doing, that night it called out to her, but it no longer scratched at her window. This won't not help you, Abigail, you have made me angry now, I hunger for more than your mind, now let me in, no. She stated as she looked out the window at the thing, a small but cautious smile crept across her face, but your fear is so delicious, your fears, some of the tastiest I have ever eaten, it will be sad to lose you. It stated almost sorrowfully. She left the curtains drawn back as the thing stood under the street lamp again, she looked out at it and performed some yoga as it looked on at her, the blessings bolstered her courage, false courage, but it was something, she needed to do something. Confusion in its mind, it could sense her false bravado, soon it thought, she would be taken, her mind grew weaker daily, as her fear grew stronger, Kylie had stood watching her roommate from a distance, she thought she saw something outside the window, but it was nothing more than a shadow. But it did seem as if Abigail was teasing something, she just did not know what. May 30, 2014. Abigail had not left the dorm of all the next day, she had slept in, Kylie was concerned, but had not mentioned it to her roommate, she had wait another day or so, if things still seemed odd, she had speak to Abigail, could be last year or graduation jitters, Kylie was worried too, student loans, job hunting, all the normal post-graduation crap, so lost in thought, she did not hear Abigail come up behind her. A-H-H. She croaked as Abby touched her shoulder, whoa, whoa. Sorry K. Abby stated smirking at her friend's jumpiness, damn girl, scared the shit out of me, phew. She said giggling, it's almost 6 p.m. you've been asleep all day? Yeah, I think all those restless nights finally caught up to me, I was out. Well now that you are up, want to go grab a bite to eat, I was thinking cheesesteaks Kylie stated with a severe head nod and smile, all that gooey cheese, and bread, and meat, mmm millimeters. But your girlish figure, Abby teased with a smirk, screw it I'm hungry, Kylie shot back, getting her things, tell you what, I will give you some money, and you can get one for both of us, I'm gonna stay here, I'm, expecting company tonight. Abby stated her voice dropping low and unsure, Abby, do not worry just still a little groggy, that cheese steak will help my mood, no cheese whiz, that shit sucks, provolone, American, mayo, and salt and pepper, she said giving her a 20. Alright, I'm gonna run over to Torres and see if he wants anything since you are paying for mines, I can get him one, Kylie said grabbing her purse, see you in about an hour or so. Do not take too long I'm gonna need that steak. I'm this close to starving to death, arg, ha <laughs> ha. She growled pinching her fingers together, mission accepted captain. Kylie stated, as Kylie closed the door behind her Abigail's face turned to stone, she took a deep breath as the sounds of the monster called out to her, goosebumps and chills appeared on her skin. Poor Abigail, savor that treat, it's to be your last. Time's up Abby, when next you leave your room, you will not see it again, it hissed at her, I will have you this eve, or maybe Kylie, her ignorance of events will make her death that much tastier, her fear will be exquisite. Abby put her head down, it had been more than a week since the thing came into her life, and she had grown ever so weary it, the fear was there, and she had known that it would go after Kylie, if she did not give it what it wanted, Kylie was her high school friend. 
She loved her like a sister and had to make this sacrifice. In silence, she walked over to the window and looked out at the creature. Within a blink, it had moved from the street lamp to the window, smiling that dark cavernous grin. Abigail placed her hands on the windowsill and they unlocked it. The monster's hollow sockets grew wide, it teased her, it began salivating her oncoming death. The window had only opened a quarter of an inch when the thing oozed into the room, as it did the lights dimmed, and her door was closed as it hissed in pleasure, succulent Abigail, I shall rend beautiful brown flesh and savor your fear as you aghkk. It gurgled, surprise etched on its hollow face, it instinctively tried to alter its form, but lost all focus, Abigail had grabbed its sorry excuse for a throat and squeezed it, tilting her head to the sides as she examined it. Its clawed hands tried desperately to shred the smaller human woman's flesh, but with her free hand, Abby broke the thing's slimy wrist, it howled in pain, oily skin oozed around her hand as she held its neck, what do you call yourself? She asked looking up at the towering beast, with neither anger or disgust, unsure of what was happening. The thing said nothing, until Abigail squeezed harder, name, I will not ask again, grr grr, grixkillianen. It croaked as Abigail released, then pushed it down to the floor, your name is stupid. That's what I will call you, stupid, she said taking a seat on her bed, she turned to look at it, why such long names? You know, you hadamans, crack me up. You all do that stare at people through the windows thing, I mean it works for some people, but I find it funny because you all do it. It's so cliche, and always to girls, ever try it on boys? Rixkillianen, stupid, looked at her in silence, it tried to exit the room and found that it could not, what, what are you? It asked with genuine curiosity, and possibly something akin to fear, it just did not know what to think, I'm just a human, nothing special just a girl, hey, question stupid, do you have time for a story? She paused a moment, faking like she waited for it to answer, good. The thing did not know what to do, this whelp of a human, had moved as though she was one of them, it wanted to do nothing more than tear her apart, but it knew she had be faster, so it sat, waiting. I'm an atheist. I do not believe in any of this supernatural, or ghost, or demon shit. I believe in my myself, and my own strength, no others, that thing with the priest and shaman. That was all for you. She said nearly laughing, that thing with me being all scared and fearful? A show, I know you feed off it, I wanted you at your peak, just to break you down. How can you do this? You lack belief, yet harmed me, it should not be. It said, its ethereal voice now shaky, it's called science you dope. In order for your particles to interact with me, they have to have physical features, you can touch me, why wouldn't I be able to touch you? Abigail Mitchell sat in front of the thing and began her tale, you see when Abigail was around 15, she was kidnapped one night, taken from her Philadelphian home by what some call an unidentified flying object, there she was subjected to many cruel and torturous experiments. She was missing for more than two years, her parents had given up hope of finding her alive, however Abigail was alive, and one of the alien scientists had taken a liking to this human, she never appeared to be afraid of what was happening to her, more curious. The being ended her experiments and was about to return her to Earth, but she asked to stay a while longer and learn about it, and its culture. The being is intrigued by this fearless Earth girl took her under its androgynous wing, she had asked if it was some form of angel or demon like they mentioned in church, it told her that those things did not exist, what existed were ancient beings throughout time, space and even other universes. What many had in common including his, was technology so advanced, it seemed mystical to lesser races, some of the beings had grown bored with their own existence, and sought to influence others for fun and even sport, demons and angels and other mythical beings that existed near Earth were simply beings with a level of technology that mortality meant nothing to them, they had conquered death, with technology, some had abused it, and altered their forms by mistake so long ago, they were now myth to those same creatures. She was told to never be afraid of those things, for she could beat them with the same technology they had within themselves, they were not magical, Abigail stared at stupid, and showed at the palm of her hands, beneath her skin, it could see what looked like orbs floating just underneath. 
Quantum physics, my body is home to some of the best spirit tech ever created. I was taught to manipulate it. Everything operates with laws, not mystical laws, but cosmic laws. I'm going to do you a solid. I'm going to let you live, not looking like that, though. Then I'm going to send you home to whatever stupid universe or stupid dimension or stupid planet your people come from. But first a message to your people, tell them to stay away from Earth. Her hands brightened and within minutes she smirked. The creature had never felt pain such as it felt now. It simply wanted to go back to where it came from. Abigail had learned much during her abduction. She had seen and been to places humans could not dream of. She learned the arts of her captor. Why this, it said as it began to dematerialize back to its home planet or dimension, so your people know that if they ever return, that is the face of their enemy. With that, the creature was sent back to its home. May 22, 2014. Rixkillianen found his prey, the small and weak-looking human exited the building, clutching her phone in one hand and holding her book bag shoulder strap in the other. It reached out and touched her mind, learning her name, Abigail, I see you. It said in that familiar ethereal tone, the game was afoot, what it did not notice was the smile that crept across Abigail's face when she looked up, the game was indeed afoot, but the winner had already been determined. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed the video hit that like button to support my work. And as always enjoy the fear my dear.